Hello, Future Colin here. While I'm putting the finishing touches to this video, I've been talking to Anna Sounds, and they've agreed that if you like what you're about to see and you want to grab one of these to build for yourself and learn everything you need to know about how overdrive pedals work, then they're happy to give you 10% off your purchase just for watching this video. There's a discount code and direct link in the description below, but be warned, this deal is only active for the first two weeks after the date of upload. So if you want to grab yourself one of these, you best be quick. Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. So you like guitar pedals, who doesn't? These little effects boxes are a lot of fun and can take us on inspirational sonic journeys, but have the electronic innards ever been a mystery to you? Deciphering what's happening on a circuit level that allows tiny resistors, capacitors and transistors to manipulate your guitar signal might seem like black magic, beyond the ken of mortal men, but it's actually not as complicated as it seems. You just need the right teacher. That's where the Anasounds Ego Driver comes in. This is part of their Effects Teacher DIY pedal line, which goes above and beyond other clone board PCB projects by breaking down the circuit into its operational blocks, describing what each component is doing, and backing up all that theory with spectral analysis so that you can prove in terms of frequency response that this pedal does what they claim. By the end of building this, you should have a detailed understanding of how overdrive circuits work, but the learning doesn't stop there. Custom voicing arrangements allow you to trade in and out different clipping diodes and voicing filters so that you can fine tune your perfect overdrive. Let's rewind to the start of this building process and see how much we can discover. Take your seats. Class is in session. We're about to get started here, but before we do, I think it's worthwhile discussing why I think the effects teacher line from Anasounds is a bit more of an educational resource than other clone boards you'll find online. Other pedal clones will simply give you a circuit board and a bag full of components and send you on your way, but Anasounds does things a little bit differently. They want to ensure that you have a firm understanding of the circuit that you are creating, as well as the purpose of each individual component. Alongside the detailed documentation which takes you through the build process and spectral analysis of the pedal, Anasounds provides the components in separate bags denoting their purpose within the circuit. We have components for the power supply, ensuring correctly distributed power throughout the board. The input buffer, which takes the guitar signal and transforms it into something that the rest of the circuit can manipulate. The gain stage, where the signal level is amplified by an op-amp chip. The clipping and voicing block, where the unique character of the overdrive is defined. This is where the switches and screw terminals sit, allowing for solder-free custom component arrangements. The tone block, allowing for frequency adjustability of the preceding circuit. And the output buffer, a reversal of the input buffer, bolstering the signal leaving the pedal so that it will work with the rest of your equipment. Segregating the components into groups based on their job within the circuit not only makes learning how this effect works much easier, but the build itself becomes far less intimidating. We are only ever dealing with a handful of components at a time. We're completing smaller parts of the circuit board so it doesn't feel like such a massive undertaking, and we understand each part of the circuit as we go. If you are new to building pedals, then the documentation stops after each stage to discuss what you've constructed, what each of the components do, and gives you voltage test points so that you can ensure you have each stage correct before moving on to the next. If you have the required equipment, you can perform spectral analysis at each step, transforming the mathematical theory of component values into a tangible representation of how the effect manipulates audio frequencies. The documentation gives you graphs of what you should see on your scope. Personally, I am going to speed through this build without stopping for voltage tests or scoping at each stage, as I'm incredibly familiar with putting these kind of circuits together and have enough background in electronics to trust the mathematics and isolate any problems should they occur. But for anyone who's just getting started with electronics, this step-by-step -step approach is invaluable for getting a head start on the information it took me years to acquire. 
The documentation is freely available online, no purchase necessary, so you can read through it before you commit to determine if this is something that you have the skill, tools and confidence to accomplish. A direct link will be in the description underneath this video. I'll try not to spoil too much of it in case you are interested in reading it for yourself, but there are a couple of interesting points I will bring up as they'll become relevant when it comes to the sound samples of this effect. What we are building here is essentially a Tube Screamer 808 clone with a few interesting improvements and some custom functionality which allows the circuit to sound vastly different depending on the components you select. The Ego Driver deviates from the 808 circuit almost immediately by improving the power supply. After doing a little filtering of the incoming power, a TC1044 voltage regulator chip generates negative 9 volts. Why is this important? Well, in a regular Tube Screamer circuit, the gain stage is limited in its amplification by the voltage rails of the op amp. Since we feed the pedals with positive 9 volts DC, then the op amp is only capable of amplifying between 0 volts and positive 9 volts, with positive 4.5 being a virtual ground. This gives us a total of 9 volts headroom, or 4.5 volts for each half of the waveform. However, generating negative 9 volts, the Ego Driver can run its gain stage from negative 9 to positive 9 volts, with ground staying at 0 volts where it should be. This suddenly gives us 18 volts of headroom to work with, generated internally while still running the pedal from a standard 9 volt DC PSU. More headroom in the op amp means that we can amplify the signal further before the op amp reaches its limits, giving us better dynamic range for our signal and more control over how much saturation and clipping occurs. This is particularly useful for boost circuits where we want a lot of amplification but not necessarily a lot of clipping. Speaking of the gain stage, while the Ego Driver has a pretty standard arrangement, it might be worth talking in a little more detail about what's going on. The op amp used here is a 4558 dual amplifier chip, which means it contains two individual op amps on a single DIP. Only the first of these is used in the gain stage. The second op amp on the IC is utilised later in the tone block. The op amp is in a non-inverting arrangement here, which basically means it's making things bigger. An op amp has two different inputs, inverting and non-inverting, which allow the amplifier to perform a great number of mathematical operations, hence the name operational amplifier. It can make things bigger or smaller, do addition or subtraction, change signs from positive to negative, or more complicated mathematics besides. The signal runs into the non-inverting input and out through the op amp's output. However, we also take a small portion of that output and feed it back into the inverting input. This is called a negative feedback loop. By looping back some of the output back into the inverting input, the op amp combines the two inputs into one signal. If none of the signal gets fed back, then the op amp will have its maximum gain. However, if all of the signal gets fed back into the inverting input, then the two inputs will cancel each other out, leaving nothing left to amplify. You'll notice that the gain control sits right within this negative feedback network. This potentiometer is literally deciding the op amp gain. Remember, gain is just a signal multiplication factor. If the signal coming out is twice as big as the signal that went in, then we have a gain factor of 2. By using a variable resistor to determine how much of the output is fed back into the inverting input of the op amp, we can define what the signal multiplication factor is at any given time, from maximum gain to nothing at all and anywhere in between. The other components surrounding the op amp in the gain stage are there to define the frequency boundaries that will be amplified. Frequencies above and below certain thresholds aren't really part of the music, they're just noise in the system, so we can filter these out to help focus the sound on the musical frequencies we care about. Or, as we'll see later, we can push those boundaries to either extend or restrict the musical range of the effect.
pedal completed and tested, this is where the real experimentation can begin. There's a bag of spare components which can be traded in and out of the circuit, allowing you to craft a custom overdrive to suit your needs. If you do have an aversion to soldering irons or are electronically challenged and everything you've seen in this video so far has given you the fear, then Anasounds do sell this pedal pre-constructed, allowing you to perform all the following experiments with nothing but your trusty flathead screwdriver. The voicing block interacts with the negative feedback loop from the gain stage, providing soft clipping and modifying the filtering components which define the frequency boundaries being amplified. By making changes to the clipping diodes and the capacitors and resistance in the filter, we can define how much distortion and saturation the pedal has, as well as how much of the low end gets amplified. So whether you want a subtle full range drive or a more tight, aggressive mid range push, you can achieve it at the flick of a switch all while retaining the stock TS settings. The sounds that you are about to hear come from my favourite configurations of the custom voiced components. I'll put all the components and settings being used on screen so you can see what I'm doing. Of course, these are just supposed to be a starting point. There's no requirement for you to stick with the components that Anasound provides. I've had a rummage through my component drawers to find other components that will work when screwed into these terminal blocks. Let's give them a listen. <laughs> What we've ended up with here is an incredibly high fidelity Tube Screamer style pedal. In its stock settings you get the voicing and character you'd expect, but at the flick of a switch you can extend the bass response or change the clipping characteristics, providing different overdrive qualities and the best part is, you know exactly what's happening on a circuit level to cause that change. 
If you're looking to widen your understanding of how pedal circuits work, then I would highly recommend you download the documentation, grab yourself one of these and try the build for yourself. Well, there's nothing new for me in this build, I did find the presentation of the components and the documentation to be exceptionally well thought out. If I had had this when I started electronics, it would have saved me a lot of time. This is designed really well as an educational resource and I kinda wish I'd thought of it first. Top marks Anna sound, gold star. Once again, all the relevant links will be in the description underneath this video and don't forget to click all the buttons that you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. But that's all for now. Keep it loud. Stay safe.